Welcome to ESC TV. On behalf of my co-chair Jean-Philippe Collet, it's my pleasure to welcome you to discuss uh, the joint guideline of ESC EACTS on myocardial revascularization. We are privileged uh, to share uh, the discussion with the two task force chairs, uh, Franz Josef Neumann and uh, Miguel Souza uh, Uwe. And my first question goes uh, to Franz Josef. Uh, can you share with us what were the most important new recommendations in this joint effort? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I'd like to stress that there is prognostic and symptomatic indication for revascularization, and both PCI and cabbage can serve this purpose when appropriately indicated. A very important point is that, as a rule, angiographic um, evaluation is not sufficient, but we need documentation of hemodynamic relevance or of ischemia. We also give uh, objective criteria for the choice between PCI and cabbage, and uh, uh, among them there is, um, of course, surgical risk, but also feasibility, which involves the ability to achieve complete revascularization, the pattern of coronary artery disease, the extent judged by the syntax score, and the presence or absence of diabetes. And the more complex the, the coronary anatomy, and particularly together with diabetes, then we have an advantage for cabbage in the long run. The guideline also brings up the concept of shared decision making. So the wishes and intentions of the patients need to be considered and involved in decision making. And so uh, since the, the release of the guidelines one year ago, what is your feedback? Uh, from these guidelines, from, from you know, the experience you have presenting the guidelines? Well, my, I can only speak by, for my personal experience. Uh, we don't have yet uh, data that could uh, document what is the impact. Uh, this, I think, will be achieved when we will have uh, the possibility of measuring by, for example, introducing quality indicators, selecting some class one recommendations, and then measuring uh, uh, what, are, what is the application through registries. I think the ESC is currently undergoing this initiative and probably will have this data in the near future. I can tell you that in the setting where I'm working in Lisbon, I'm a cardiac surgeon in Lisbon, Portugal, we work in a very close and uh, heart team works perfectly. We, uh, we are asked to uh, give our opinion. We go to the patient sometime in the cat lab and discussing with interventional cardiologist and the patient trying to choose the best option. Uh, and and our, uh, the feedback that I have from my colleagues is excellent. I would just wanted to stress what just Franz Joseph said, that there are four principles to selecting one method or the other of revascularization, either the PCI or cabbage, which is surgical risk, the anatomical complexity as judged by the syntax score, uh, diabetes, and completeness of revascularization. Franz Josef, it's now already one year after publication of the guideline. New evidence uh, continues to emerge. Also during this meeting, we will hear the 10-year outcome of the syntax uh, trial. Are there any new considerations uh, that you would like uh, to share with us on any of the topics? Well, I think there are three major new aspects. First of all, we had an individual patient meta-analysis on the um, prognostic relevance of lesions that are uh, hemodynamically relevant, and uh, this may impact on the indication for revascularization based on FFR and IFR measurements. Uh, second, um, we have new data on, on NOACs, uh, specifically the Augustus trial, and I think this uh, also the concepts need, to, need an update. And finally, there were also some new data on uh, secondary prevention measures. Uh, extending antithrombotic treatment, um, PCSK9 inhibitors, anti-diabetics, and I think this needs to be updated, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the CCS, chronic coronary syndromes guidelines, that will be presented tomorrow. Your gut feeling about uh, heart team discussion, do you think that it, uh, we have more heart team discussion since these, these guidelines, or does it has changed something, or? My hope is that, uh, that we have intensive uh, heart team discussions 
but I hope that the criteria help objectify these discussions that we have in the guidelines. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, clinicians are aware of the evidence and that the uh, uh, more and more, uh, the, uh, uh, and the guidelines are helpful in this, in this sense, helping, uh, making, uh, helping uh, clinicians uh, in their decision making. And I, I think, of course, to answer your question, it depends geographically, and even in my country, it depends on the hospitals, in the setting where you work. Nevertheless, I think the trend is going towards a greater cooperation, uh, and, and, and in complex cases particularly, because not all cases need discussion, of course. What do you need to define a, a priori beforehand is to decide which cases will need discussion and what, those that will not dis need discussion. Of the heart, between in the heart team. Well, thank you very much. I think it has been a major achievement to produce these joint guidelines between the surgical community Absolutely. and the cardiology community, increasing the credibility and providing Absolutely. useful uh, guidance. And thank you very much for sharing these insights with us. Thank you.